Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to this day number three of Inktober. And we're going to do a sunflower with a flying honeybee or a flying bee. I'm not sure what kind of bee it is because he's flying away from us. But I had done a branch of cherry blossoms with this little bee flying away and everybody was like, oh yes, oh yes, I want to do the bee, I want to do the bee. And some people said they wanted to do the cherry blossoms also, but I did do cherry blossoms last year and I'll probably do them again during this Inktober, but I want to do a sunflower and I want the sunflower to be laying down on the table and then the little bee is flying away. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just start drawing. I'm using a Zensations number four, zero, zero point four. All right, so we're gonna get started here with my little glowing eyeballs sitting over to the side. I am going to get my little bee on here. And now the bee, he's really very cute and truthfully very easy. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to put sort of a little dashed line diamond in. Just like that. That's his fuzzy little back end flying away from you. And then you see a tiny bit of his head, but not too much. And then coming off of his back end here, you see these are like the thighs, the, the upper part of his leg. Then there's another part, another segment of his leg. And then his little feet seg segments. And those are more just sort of little flippy bits, <laughs> little flippy bits. Now his wings come off of his back right up here. At least that's what I'm saying they do. And did you notice I wasn't too perfect here. I'm, I'm not too worried about being perfect because his little wings have the shimmer and they have kind of um, sort of a, a texture to them. And his wings are moving, so you can't really see them all the way anyway. Then he's got a uh, little kind of like antennae bits that kind of come off the front of his face. And you might see a bit of a, another leg hanging down in front. But you won't see all six. Now you can see a bit of his like stripiness around his back end like that. Now this could be a honeybee. This could be a bumblebee. It all depends on how you want to color him. All right. Now the center of this sunflower, and I'm going to put this in kind of with a dotted line. like this. This part is very much like doodling. If you've ever done zentangling or um, pattern drawing, there's a lot of a lot of ways that we could do this in. I could do this by drawing some little segment fits in or dotting them in like this and then going around and kind of giving myself little segments to see where the see where the seeds are going. And then I, that helps me see that I'm doing these little flowery bits. They're bigger on the outside edge and they get smaller as they go towards the center. See? But now I don't actually have to keep drawing my little guides. 
I know that these are all going to be kind of about this big. Maybe getting smaller as they go away from me, just because it's going farther away. And as things go around and away, they sort of flatten out, they get a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna fill in those little circles. Now this row here, they're a little bit smaller. They're not tiny. And we're just sort of spiraling these around also. Because you have all those rows of seeds going all the way around. And I'm still not doing it exactly the way I'm leaning out of the picture. <laughs> the position that I had the book in, I need to needed to move it instead of moving me. So now these are a little bit smaller. Now we're going to put the, le the petals in. And the petals are fun little shapes. So you get a lot of S, S curves and they sort of come together closer here and then curve out. See how that's like a big a big letter S. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to follow along with each other. They can be underneath. There can be spaces between them. They can be curled up. You see now, I just curled up and I want this one to end up looking like it's really curled. So I'll do that again. I'll do that again here. I went, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to come like this. I'm going to make a curl up. Now I want part of this to look like it's on the top and part of it to look like it's coming from underneath. And if we do that in a few spots, so this one is going to come up and over like that. It's going to have a couple different, and it's going to, it's sort of folded. See? get a few of these that have some really interesting shapes to them and then the rest of them can be much more plain. So now I can put some petals that just sort of fit in around it. Like that. And by doing those really well, maybe one more fancy one back there. See, by doing it this way, we can then put some less fancy ones. I'm calling these that are all curvy and curled fancy. See? But it's not, it looks like magic but it's not, it's just practice. And that's pretty much what all of art is. It, it looks effortless when somebody who knows what they're doing is doing it, but that's only because there's been a lot of practice. I didn't grow up 
and just be able to make flowers like this the very first time I sat down and started drawing. I can go around fairly quickly. Some of these are going to overlap. Some of these are going to go different directions. And maybe I have them folding over a little bit. The petals are just sort of wandering. There's no rhyme or reason except that they need to go around the flower. I think I want another one that's sticking out farther over here. And there might even be a little curl on that edge. See, you can curl an edge just by going in and putting another line in the petal. So say we go like that. It's got a curled edge. I probably don't have to put too many lines, but something I want you to see is that if you take your pen, you can put little lines. If I wasn't putting color in here, do you see how I've got these little lines that are going and flowing over and little lines that are under this one so it looks like it's like darker or shadowed. This one could be shadowed underneath of there. This could be shadowy here. And flowing in. And then there could be a little bit of an edge back behind. I don't want to do too much, but now that I've done some, I need to I actually need to uh, be consistent because for me, I need to be consistent here. Now, my lines are pretty coarse. I'm, I'm not, you know, I didn't shift to a smaller pen, which I could have done. I could have shifted to a smaller pen to get finer lines. I'm trying to keep them fairly light. I'm sort of lifting as I'm going so that it's not not a hard scribbled in line. At least not too much. <laughs> Some of these spots I'm just going to go so that there's a shadow. Maybe I want that one to kind of go up a little bit. Makes it look like it's bumped the other direction. But I'm just, I'm putting the pen down and I'm kind of flicking it. The nice thing here, this flower ended up being, you know, pretty much my own imagination. So who's to say that these petals aren't going the way they were intended to go? No one can say that because it's all the flower might have been inspired by one, but it's not, it's not an actual representation of a real flower that I have a picture of. It has, I just have the starting point almost all the way around. go. Oops, there's still, you can see where I am just giving it tiny little flicks of a pen. I'm not I'm not actually coloring it with the pen. I'm just shading a little bit trying to make it look like things are curved and curled. So I'm following the flow of the petal. Just 
just follow the flow of the petal and get an indication of shape. Oh, that's sweet. So I think, yep, yeah, I think I am going to have to, going to have to put a bit of that stem coming down. There's a bit of, a bit more of that flower that's underneath of there. That's more dark. That's that part that's holding up the seed head. You know, there's some shadow in underneath. But you won't see the shadow of it back here. You'll only see that on the front side. So you want to, you want to keep it consistent. You don't want to start showing something that's in the back that wouldn't, that you wouldn't be able to see, but look at that. You get that little shadow that's underneath of the petals going down the stem. And then I'm just going to let it drift off. We could leave it just like this. We would not have to do anything else to it. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't plan on putting any color on this. No, I like it this way. I am going to put, this is Inktober number three. There we go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, Make sure that you click the bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go up and share the videos with your friends. You've got friends that want to learn how to draw too. Share my videos. I have a beginner drawing playlist. I have Inktober playlist from last year, and I have a new playlist that I'm starting to fill up with this year's videos. So remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you and I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.